Okay, next thing, fixed sterilization. <coughs> sterilization is one of the biggest non-value added but imperative things we do. We have to do it, but remember, I'm looking for gray-haired guys or no-haired guys. Um, remember, like, infection control came on? And what the, what the industry said was, you can charge an infection control surcharge. Well, you want me to clean your instruments or not? This is 10 extra bucks if you want me to clean them. What the heck? I mean, really, okay? As a patient, it's like, you know, I mean, really? Okay, yeah, well, it cost me money. I used to just wipe them off, and now I want to, they make me want to actually clean them, so I'm going to charge you some more money. Let me show you where. I mean, just, Crazy. Okay, so this is a non value added step. We have to figure out how to make it more efficient. It's not the patient's job to just pay extra. So, no bags, not too many. Let me go into detail. I couldn't do this in a doctor lecture yesterday because they would all fall asleep, but this is relevant to us. Okay, so you got a couple of different methods to go ahead and process instruments. You can put them all in bags and then spill them all out on a bracket table. Choice A. Okay, uh, this is all available on the Desergo website. I'm not going to labor on this. You can go, so this is what it kind of looks like. Here's what's good about doing it this way. If you hate your dentist, you can spend a lot of time in sterilization sorting this stuff out. If you like, remember pickup sticks? Remember that? Before digital games, there were like analog games, they were amazing. They bought them in a below box. Yeah, so this is like pickup sticks forever. Okay, it's like, like, Grooming beaches forever for a job. I mean, why anybody would want that? You've got to really hate your dentist to want that job forever. That's what I'm saying. And that's taking to its like ultimate state. Yeah, I'd like, um, you know that bone file? Could you, could you go ahead and find me? You know the one. Yeah, just find, the, yeah, find that one. Okay, the odds are, yeah, why don't you come in after lunch? Just stop bleeding a little bit. Come on in after lunch. We'll find it. Okay. Bags and trays. This is another lifetime job. Okay, this is a job. You take things and you go spread them out on a tray and you get a, and here's what they told us. They told us you get a whole bunch of different color trays. Okay, you get some bright blue ones, and some green ones. Who told us that? It was the people who made trays told us that. Okay, that's how that worked, okay? We went, oh, okay, shiny object. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, and so then, if you do it that way, because there's a lot of labor involved, what you do is you go ahead and try to simplify it to have as few things on each tray. So you want to have like a crown seat tray and a filling tray and a, a you know, tray for, well, I don't know about you, but I do like a lot of things at once. And so the last thing I want is now I got a bunch of trays, right? with different colors and different, and I got all the instruments spread all over the place, now I gotta resort that? That is nuts, okay? The problem wasn't that, the problem was since the labor was so high, I and mean, here's what they said, you're gonna have a tub for every procedure, right, and a tray for every procedure, and you're just gonna be able to reach them. Nobody can reach that, that doesn't exist. Like the patient's over here somewhere, the patient is not close enough, you can't reach that. So once again, that's a warehouse, and it's a bad system, lose, lose. Okay, cassettes. The reason to go to cassettes is it's fast. Well, that's the reason to go to cassettes. And it's not that expensive. Now what you do differently, here's how people mess up cassettes. What they do is they take the same setups that they had in their trays and they buy the same number of cassettes and so they have a whole bunch of cassettes now because who told them to do that? Oh, those people who sold cassettes to us. Yeah, that's right. Damn it. Okay, you, what you, the whole goal changes. Once you do a cassette, you want to get as much stuff in to do as many procedures as possible in as few cassettes as you possibly can. When I started at NYU, uh, they, had, they, they processed 16,000 instruments a day. Complain about your sterilization center, okay? The odds that you've got the right patient on the right floor in 11 floors in two buildings with four elevators uh, total, okay? You got the, the, the record, the patient, the doctor, the instruments, since they had 22 different styles of cassettes, 
I mean, that, the odds approach zero that any dentistry ever got done in that place. It was a minor miracle. Well, it took like 20 meetings to get down, them down to 12 different kinds of cassettes. I have four different kinds of cassettes in my office, total. Okay, I have four different kinds of cassettes, and I'll probably show you the different number. I can do in a 14 set anything operative. Anything operative is there. Now, I really only need 12 instruments. I got 14 in it. Why? Because when you open the cassette and every slot's full, what are the odds that you have something that you don't need there? None. What are the odds that something's missing? None. So again, visually, boom, you open it, boom, you set. If you've got one slot missing, you get the odds that you can have things jumbled around suddenly increase. You follow me on that? So I got a Hollenbeck as one of the instruments in there. Why? Because I owned a bunch of Hollenbecks from 20 years ago when I did amalgam. And if I broke a packing instrument, while I'm packing, I could take the hall back and I could use it. That's the only thing I use it for, and I got like 50 still. So from when I had trays. Okay, so it's going to be there as a backup, but really it's a filler for that 14. Follow me? So that's how you look at that. But just do that. Now, here's what happens when you do that. When you do that, suddenly this becomes an issue. 15 years ago, Somebody that's really a noted authority in infection control tried to rip me a new one about this. Because I said, when we tested ultrasonics, the only place we found that was really toxic in the sterilization process was the aerosol made from the ultrasonic. Okay, because you're taking toxic stuff, got bacteria in them that may or may not be dead, and now we're making a big aerosol out of them, right? Well, that's problem A. Problem B, is we went to cassettes because it's faster, and so what's a cassette? Well, a cassette is two metal plates, two pieces of rubber, and an instrument, right? So let's see how that works with this setup. So we got these little ones, which require you to pull everything out. What the manufacturers told you to do is get one of these giant ones, right? Okay, we should make like a god-awful amount of noise, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and put the instruments, like wrap them, or put the whole cassette in. So when we studied this back then, what we did, I'm kind of just stupid. So I got to put my hands, like I'm the kid that had to put his finger in the socket. Okay, that's the only way I learned things, which is where I, probably why I don't have any hair. So. <laughs> okay, that's just how I learned things. So what we did was, we, we, we were trying to look at washers. So we, we put an instrument and we let resin cement dry on it and, and we put it in a washer and we put another one in an ultrasonic, and then we ran them, well actually we ran them until the ultrasonic caught fire, which is about 28 hours in. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not really totally stupid. We were on, it was on cement, so when it flamed up, we didn't burn the whole place down, the building we were in. Uh, and can you tell which one is the one that went in the ultrasonic for 28 hours and which one was dishwashed? No. Because here's the deal. You get resin cement on a metal instrument, it ain't coming off with anything but cold steel. So neither works to do everything that you need to do if you didn't bother to get the glue off the thing at chair side. So having which one of these is more powerful isn't really relevant, even though the fact that they both do the same thing if you have a bare instrument in either of them. But of course, in the ultrasonic, you don't have a bare instrument. And now, when you take it and put it in a cassette, two metal, two rubber strips, instrument. Two rubber strips, that's kind of called a shock absorber. So we put that in, a, in an ultrasonic, all the energy from the ultrasonic hits the cassette, none of it goes to the instrument. So it ain't never gonna work. Okay, you know, you, there's not enough force you can use from ultrasonics to make that work. Now you need an ultrasonic in your office, however, because jewelry <laughs> needs to be cleaned. Okay, and there's nothing like that. So here's what you want to go to instead. Soak. This is called a sink. You've seen one. Okay, they cost like a hundred bucks. You're a dentist. Buy an expensive one. Okay, with fancy soft edges. Okay, that's called soaking. Here's the deal. If you put instruments under hot, bright colored lights, you bake the crap on the instrument. And then you try to get it off. 
Does it, how's that work in your dishwasher? Like, let's bake it on, then we'll try to wash it off. Or vibrate it off if you have something at home like that. It's kind of a bad plan, right? So why do we do that? Okay. All you need to do is get resins off the instruments at chair side. No solution other than that. And then keep the bio burden moist. If you keep the bio burden moist, then you got a shot at washing it off. So it's enzyme enzymatic solution in the pre-soak, GC coenzyme. You could probably use Calgon, probably work just the same. I didn't tell you that, okay? I would use something dental, because we're dentists. Okay, and you'd want people, if they said, what do you use? And I'd say, it says dental on it. It'll cost you 10 times as much, but that's okay. Uh, dishwasher. Now I didn't say, okay, well, that's $8,000, that's $800. This is faster over here. This is slower over here. Uh, kind of the mechanisms that they have inside them are the same. What's the difference is the timer. Now, I will talk a little bit more about that in a sec, but what do you need last? Large, fast autoclave. This part is what you really need. Big cooker. This, in production speak, is a batch operation. Heating is always batch. Okay, if you know production technique, everything else is going to be lean, just in time. We're going to turn those rooms around fast. We're going to do one at a time because you're treating one person at a time. They're all individuals. This is something you do batch because heating things takes time. It's the opposite of what you've probably been told, which is like get a little high heat sterilizer. It's going to be fast. Here's why. Okay, so we talk about trays. This is some of the trays. Scum will scrub it, put it in the ultrasonic, dry it, bag it, whatever. So first pass two hours, steady state seven hours, multiple touches for each time. Each, every one of those things needs to be touched at every step, right? That's called a job. Faster process. High speed washer, okay, you can buy us the $8,000 washer. Okay, wrap, post back autoclave. Okay, that's the fastest method. First pass, 60 minutes. So you got a faster first pass, steady state, once you've got everything up to temperature, 40 minutes. One labor touch per 40 minutes. That's the fastest way to go. That's also the most expensive way to go. That's a you know, $20,000 solution. High speed washer, high speed auto transfer autoclave is the fastest for one set of instruments, right? Static. Here's the only problem. So, so you can get the first pass through in 20 minutes, but then every 10 minutes to make that go fast, the only way you're going to make that fa go fast is you're going to have somebody standing there feeding the thing. The last time I got chased out of the side cam booth, I said, just make an auto loader on this thing. You know, we put a stack of cassettes and you just make it auto load and we'd be fine. Okay? I mean, they figured that out on records like, you know, 1956. So if you don't do that, then this isn't faster unless you get somebody, you follow me on this? So this thing, unless you've got somebody willing to get in here every 10 minutes, this is not fast. So what I'm interested in is the low labor method. Soak, wash, cook. Here's the deal. This step never goes faster than the slowest step anyway. And since I can fit 10 cassettes in a big autoclave, and I only touch it once an hour, so I got one touch per hour, and the cycle runs every hour. That's the way to do it, okay? Because you haven't, just buy an extra couple of cassettes if you have to. I'll show you how many cassettes I have. So soap, wash, cook. You may want to dry heat uh, surgical instruments. Okay, we dry heat burrs. Because I want to use some carbides, and if I, if I steam carbides, I might as well just throw them out. Because they're not going to be worth anything. So that's a separate choice you have. The goal is flow. The goal, goal is organizing this thing for flow. Have I bored all the dentists in here? Like to tears? Really? That's amazing, okay? How about staff members? I mean, this makes sense, right? This is not what you're doing, and you're gonna go back home, please, and just make it all easy. Because then there's something, if, if we wanna hang around, in my office, if you come to visit us, okay? This is where we hang around, because there's nothing happening here. When I mean, there's nobody, Harry, you come to visit, that's where we hang around. Look at this, because it's empty. Once an hour, somebody comes through and goes boom, boom, boom. Okay, because it's, it's two minutes to go ahead and run the whole sequence. Take stuff out of the autoclave, rack it. Take stuff out of the dishwasher, put it in the autoclave. Take stuff out of the sink, put it in the dishwasher, push a button, push a button, we're done. That's it. Took as long to talk about it as it did to do it.
Again, this is, the, this is how we did it originally. It's a little fancier now, but it's the same principle. This is Jessica. Jessica's 411. We asked Jessica, this is her second week. We said, Jessica, can you set up for a precision attached partial? All she has to be able to do is read. So, inventory. Okay. Can I find it? Probably. Okay, so let's look at inventory. Every slot's full. Every bin's full. I don't know what that is. We don't use it anymore. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Okay, so for ordering, boom, done. That's how we order. Okay, everything's full, done. That's a hard speed. And those, those setups were all ready to go for, for the next hour. So this is, to not bore you, she's really fast, huh? It's amazing. Boom, 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 boom. Out we go. That's how hard it is. Reset that room. That's how hard it should be. Not very hard. Okay, it's 15 chair office. Okay, a dentist could find stuff there. We okay in sterilization? Can I leave that? Any questions? Okay, two, I'll be with you in a sec. Yes. See, if you sat in the front, I could hit you with chocolates. But you didn't. And they're Godivas, and they're delicious. Yes, sir. Are you saying Tim, can you get Mike over there? Are you saying you should have a, a washer, a regular washer? Are you saying we should have a regular washer? I'm saying you could have a regular washer. Okay, now I'll tell you two things. Some states have an OSHA person that comes in and says, you need a $7,000 washer. Okay, and if they say that, when, when a sheriff comes in with a badge, okay, they got the badge, and you buy whatever they want, okay? It's just worth it. Now, is it better? Will it work faster? No, it won't, because the autoclave's still waiting. So all you did was you created a bunch of instruments that are done in the washer, waiting for the rest of an hour to go in the autoclave. That doesn't make it go any faster. How do I know? I had to experiment, because I had to buy everything. Oh my God, I had to buy everything, because I can't tell you what to do if I haven't done it, right? I mean, that's reasonable, right? So I got a commercial dishwasher. It has a two-minute cycle. So you know how much faster it makes the whole system go after the first pass? Not one second. Not one second faster. Shiny, okay? Has little pressure indicators on it, looks cool. Okay, not one second faster. It was still cheaper than the ones, the dental ones, but that's a whole other story. Okay, yes sir. Uh, yeah, I have an M11 autoclave, yeah. and I was thinking about getting a second one. Okay, uh, M11. No, uh, uh, it's probably not. How many rooms? How many rooms are you? Okay, so you got the question. What, what should I buy? How many rooms are you? Four. You don't need a second autoclave. You do not need a second autoclave. You do not need a second autoclave. Your system screwed up. Okay? So why not? You ask the question, you got an answer. If you sat closer, I give you chocolate. No chocolate for you. Okay. You don't need it. I'll be happy. I will stay here until somebody who's put me on a plane says, you got to leave at the end of this. Because uh, i got a lot of other things to get to, to go ahead and address that. But I'll be happy to tell you, you do not need another autoclave. That's a great autoclave. It will work fantastic for what you need to do. We made them. So the question is, where are those things that pull down? We actually call them pull downs. That was good. Okay? Because I'm like simple. Yeah, we had to make them. We had to make them because we couldn't get them, so we made them. So you, you know what? Where are we today, Tim? Four what? What? Four. Four twenty-nine. Four twenty-nine. You could Nina or Erica are down there can show you how to. Yeah, I, I got them every. I got them in my kitchen at home. Because my wife came in the, the office and she went, "What are those?" I went, oh, just some dental things. She said, "No, no, no. Where did those going in my kitchen? Why didn't they go in my kitchen first? 